In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can use Substance Materials directly inside Unreal Engine using the new Substance for Unreal plugin. You can grab the plugin directly from the marketplace and install it to Engine. This new plugin has been written from the ground up and now supports Unreal Engine 5. Once you've installed the plugin, you simply need to enable it for your project. So here I'll come over to Edit and choose Plugins. And in the search, we'll just do a search here for Substance. And here you can see that I have the Substance plugin enabled. Now that I have everything set up, we can walk through the process of importing Substance materials and applying them to objects in our scene. The model you see here was created using Substance Modeler. I exported the scene to a USD and imported that into my level. I didn't create UVs for this asset, so we're going to use the new Triplanar template in the Substance plugin to texture the asset. I need to download some Substance materials that I want to use in this scene. So here at the top of the UI, you can see that I have this Substance 3D menu. If I click this button here, you can see that I have links that's going to take me to the Substance 3D Assets website, as well as the Substance 3D Community Assets website. Let's check out the community site first. From the community site, you can download materials created by the Substance community. All assets are free to use in your projects, and it's a great resource for getting started. The 3D Assets site is our curated collection of materials and models, and it's part of the Substance 3D collection. OK, let's get to some materials. I'm going to do a search for rotten wood. Here is the material I'd like to use, and I can click on it to get more information and download the material. The SBS AR file can be loaded via the Substance Unreal plugin. Now I'm going to import the Substance material that I just downloaded. So here in my content browser, I will right click and choose Import the Game. And here's the SBS AR file that I'm going to use. So I'll click Open. And now you can see that we are presented with the Substance Import options. Here's where I can set a name for the Substance instance, as well as the name for the material that will be generated. Now it's going to generate a material because I have the Create Material option enabled, which is on by default. And this allows us to select what material template that we want to use. Now we have Substance Default. You can also choose Custom, which allows you to search for a parent material that you've previously created. But in my case here, we're going to use Substance Default. And now we have this drop down, which allows me to choose which template I want to use. So by default, we have the standard option, which is great for assets that already have UVs. And the material instance is going to give you some options to be able to tile those UVs. The one that I'm going to use in this particular tutorial is the Triplanar template, which is new to the Substance plugin. This is going to use Triplanar projection, which is perfect for my asset, which doesn't really have any UVs. OK, so now that I have all this set up, I'm going to click Import. And here you can see that we have a series of texture maps that are generated. We have the Substance instance, which is the graph instance. We have the instance factory. More on that a little later. And then finally, here we have the material instance. Now, to apply the substance material, I'm just going to grab the instance material and then just place it here onto an asset in my scene. So now we have this material applied. Now, I need to make some adjustments here. So I'm just going to double click the material instance to access the material properties. Here, let me move my screen over here. So since we're using the triplanar template, you'll see that we have options here to control the position offset on the x, y, and z axes as well as the rotation offset. Here we have some controls for the projection if we want to have this actually be world aligned. And then here we have options for our scale. Now, as you can see, I definitely need to adjust the overall scale. So I'm going to use this new option that we have called Use Physical Size. And then I'm just going to enable the option here. Now, you can see that I start to get an adjustment based on the physical size of the objects applied to. Now, in my case, I need to make a few tweaks here because I didn't actually import the object in at the correct scale. That's a big point about using physical size. You want to make sure that you're working at real world scale. But no problem, the plugin allows me to change the physical size. Now, the only thing you need to actually change is just the value on the X and Y. So I'm just going to go into here and set some values. I'm going to go with something like 400 by 500. So this is basically setting up the size correctly. However, I do need to adjust my rotation. And we can do that here using the rotation offset. So here I'll enable rotation offset. And now I just need to simply make some changes here. So I'm going to set a value for 90 on the X and then also a value for 90 on the Y. Now the Z I can leave at zero because that's basically projecting here 
uh, from the top down. And so now you can see using this triplanar projection, I have mapped this substance material here to this asset in my scene. As you can see, the triplanar material instance that was created by the plugin gives me the controls to work with the overall offset rotation and projection and so on. All right, so now that we have this set up, we'll click Save, and I'll just go ahead and close the material instance. Now, one thing I want to mention is that by default, this triplanar projection is in local space. So if I actually move the object, you can see that the textures are basically still applied correctly. So if I jump back here to that material instance and I want to use something like World Align, I can enable it here. So now with World Align applied, you can see that the textures are projected in world space. OK, let's undo that. Let's go back and turn off that World Align. So now that I have everything set up here in my scene, I can actually start to go in and play around with the substance parameters itself. And so to do that, I'll come back here to the content browser and I'm going to want to double click on the substance graph instance. So double click here and you can see that now we have a set of parameters for adjusting the substance material itself. Number one, we have an output size. So we can actually change the output size. I can go all the way up to 8K if I like. In this case here, since I'm repeating this, I'm just going to leave it at 1024. But I can go in and make some changes to things like the color. So I have the rotten area amount. I'm going to go ahead and just play around with this. So you can see I can make some adjustments here to the substance material and the parameter changes update in real time. Here, let's go over to the color and just make a few changes as well. Maybe I'll just slightly, I'm going to lighten this just a little bit. So I'll go ahead and save the parameter changes and close this window. And as you can see, we now have applied this material. If I want to apply this elsewhere inside of the scene, I can simply just drag and drop and apply it. Let's take a look here at the boards that are on top here of the dock. So I'll just frame up my scene. Let's grab the material, left click, drag and drop, and apply it here onto another asset. Now, in this particular case, I can see that, well, the projection is not in the correct angle for what I want for this particular asset. Again, I'm projecting these textures using triplanar projection. Now, what I'd like to do is create a new instance of this material. And I can do that by just coming over here to the instance factory, right click, and we have some actions here for the particular substance, such as I can re-import, I can delete with instances and outputs. So if I need to delete this, and finally, I can have the option here to create a graph instance. This is exactly what I want to do. So let's use this option. So you'll see that it basically is going to do another re-import. It auto renames, but if I want, I can make a change here to the rename of this instance that's going to be created as well as the material. Uh, like I said, in this case, I'm just going to leave everything at default. And I'll click import. And now you can see here in my content browser, a new set of textures is generated and a new material instance. So now what I'll do is just left click and drag and drop and place this here on the board. So I can see that I've already made a mistake. I've used that standard default template. This object doesn't have UV, so uh, we don't see anything. So what I can do is come over here to the substance graph instance that I just created. I'd like to get rid of this, so I'm just going to right click and choose to delete with outputs. So that's going to go ahead and get rid of the actual substance graph instance as well as the textures that were generated. Now I still have this material instance that's left over, so I can delete that as well. So that's how you can remove Substance Graph instances if you need to. OK, let's do this one more time. We'll come over here to the Instance Factory, right click, create a graph instance. And this time, I want to make sure that I'm using the triplanar template. So with this all set, now we'll click Import. So again, my textures are generated. I have a new instance material I can work with. And I'll left click and drag and drop and place this here onto the board. OK, with triplanar projection, we're now seeing something happening here. The reason why I'm creating this new instance is because, number one, I want to change my projection settings. And number two, I also want to change and vary the substance parameters. And the substance plugin is allowing me or helping me to manage my texture variation from the single substance material by creating multiple instances. All right, let's jump into the material really quick. And let's go ahead and select our physical size. I'm going to use the same physical size. So I'll set this back to, let's say, 400 by 500. Actually, I'm going to switch this to 600 by 600. I think that's giving me a better result. And, you know, right off the bat, the rotation and position is looking OK. However, on this side, I think I'd like to change the rotation offset. As you can see here with the rotation manipulator, I just want to rotate this around the Z axis. 
So let's come over to the rotation offset, set my z-axis to 90, and there you go. That'll set the projection correctly for that z-axis. All right, let's go ahead and save this, close it down, and take a look here at what we have. So we have the projection set up. I think what I'd like to do now, like I said, is vary some of the substance properties. So now let's come over here to that Rotten Wood Instance 1, and we'll double click. I can change the resolution if I want to, but like I said, here's where I can go in and just start to make some, some changes here. So I think I'm just gonna brighten this slightly. We'll click OK, and let's play around again with that Rotten Area parameter. So let's take a look at what we get here. There we go, made a few changes quickly here to the texture, and I'll click Save and close the window. All right, so now I have this material set in place. I know that it's going to be correctly aligned with all of the boards that I have in this scene, so now I can just simply take this instance and just drag and drop it here onto the other boards, like you see here. So now I'd like to take a look at some additional use cases for the Substance plugin. So here you can see that I have some grime here on the pillar in this board, and these are driven by decal actors. So let's take a look at this material that I created here. So you can see that I have a material that's just using a deferred decal material domain. Now the textures themselves are actually generated from the Substance plugin. I can use Substance textures in any material. So for example, if we take a look at this texture sample, let's go browse for this in the content browser, close this down, and you can see here that this large grunge gradient dirt, if we take a look, here it is, a substance texture. We could go in and start to change these parameters to make changes to our material. So here I have another example where I created a custom landscape material. So let's take a look at the material and we'll browse over here to the section where I have all the maps. So you can see I'm using a layered material. I've imported several substance materials, grabbed the generated textures and applied them here to my custom landscape using the make material attributes node. So let's take a look at the substance properties. I'll grab the texture. Let's just go browse here for the location. And here you can see that I'm using this sand dunes coastal erosion. So let's double click and take a look at our parameters here. So if I wanted to go in and say, make a change to something like the color here, we'll grab this color and I can start to just change this up. And you can see that it's just going to update the textures in real time. Here I am painting the substance materials on the landscape using height blending in my landscape material. The Substance Material allows me to quickly make material variations by authoring new versions of the textures. All of the textures and materials for the shack and the landscape as well as the rocks were all generated by Substance Materials. So the last thing I would like to mention is that if we come up here to Edit and then go to our Project Settings, there are a set of preferences you can check for the Substance plugin. So let's scroll down to the Substance category. We'll click here, and now you can see that we have this set of preferences, things that help control the overall memory budget, as well as the type of engine. Do you want to use the Substance GPU or CPU engine? Here we have the default resolution for when we import substances. And finally, here you can set a default material template. OK, so this will conclude this look at using the Substance plugin in Unreal. You can find more information on the plugin in the Substance Documentation website. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.